Dr. Mutla, who was just explaining yeah. that, that um, we actually started off at least by saying that um, once everyone has locked in, we also calling it a roll call where we say, um, let us all at least turn the, the videos on just so that we could take a picture. And that picture yeah. will serve as a register. Yeah. yeah. So you just no, all no, not, no, not, that on picture, not the picture of your profile, the real photo. No, 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 no. You put the video on. <laughs> you put the video on. It shows us the real type you. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, okay. because anyway, um, I think because of the bandwidth, um, some people cannot um, just run the entire meeting with their videos on. Mm. You know, mm. I yeah. think that's when they, they get away with me. <laughs> <laughs> and also the battery sometimes. I, I mean, I'm running my... Yeah. My platform here with the battery ch charger on because it it just doesn't hold. Uh, they still haven't found very strong battery that can last. Yeah, uh, and it's, <laughs> it's as if you know that's what made me to take a while. I switched on and then I realized, ah, my battery is dying. So I was like rushed to go get it <laughs> to be connected so that it doesn't leave me in the middle of the time. Can you imagine with the EVs, the electric vehicles, that uh, you charge the, you actually charge the battery, and it has to last you. But the battery also has a certain life, lifetime. So if you're traveling long distances, one of the things you're going to have to worry about when you plan your trip is the charging stations. And, and also provide the time you require, because some vehicles, depending on the size, require one hour, two hour charging. So, so you, you can't just arrive like you're filling up petrol and then in, in, in 20 minutes you're taking off. You literally have to put it there, depending on whether you find the space. So, so it's becoming quite a very interesting thing and in one of the challenges, right? Countries, some countries are very slow to adopt the electrical vehicles because the charging facility is a biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah, the naval in Popo, so I'm not going to be planning it properly. Yeah, and you are home, your charging station at your home has to be very close to your source. You can only okay. have your, your garage a couple of meters away from your house. Otherwise, you need some long cables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna mm -hmm. be a challenge. No, so, 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 so for a long distance uh, on a battery cars, we will force you. So every two hours, you need to stop for an hour so that you can charge the car. So you yeah. can like so that uh, the issue of accident becomes very minimal. Mm. Mm. You're gonna have to be very creative. What do you do in the, with the two hours? The two hours is driving, an hour is for uh, recovery. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. The one hour of charging, what do you one do? Hour is the, you need to eat as much as you want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, those are the challenges of the technology we are to get. Yeah, that, that was my checking in, uh, Sylvia. I checked in with my face and I wanted people to feel jealous because I'm fresh from from Jim. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Those that are recovering from the fatigue of the celebrations of um, Mother's Day, they obviously wouldn't want to <laughs> show yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we, we, we had um, um, a good one yesterday, I think, uh, um, nicely so in terms of just having the celebrations and then being at church and the church celebrating the mothers and coming home and you find your other surprises. So this wow. morning was a this morning was a slow start where you said after being pampered so much I don't want to waste it by just getting up early. 
let me sleep yeah. until my body tells me. <laughs> so today was a day off, actually, uh, more than anything. And um, just as you wake up slowly, just doing some admin and um, um, getting it, just going a little bit. So Please. it's a matter of also responding to some of the weekend messages that you didn't pay attention to. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day in, in what do you <laughs> call it, uh, belated. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We, all, we always use the term of saying that um, if it's that particular month, it's Mother's Day for the whole month. So yeah. <laughs> you still are not late. <laughs> yeah. And Tendani is there as well. Tendani, happy mother's, mother, mother's Day to you. Thank you, Sam. Um, thank you. You're lovely. Wait, who else wants to check in? That's our checking in, guys. We, we check in by telling us a nice story that uh, energizes us. <laughs> <laughs> Umfile, did you call your mom all the way from Paris? <laughs> yes, yes. I called uh, most of the women in my life are uh, back home. Yeah. And yes, I also tried to make sure that I I send some messages on my my social media just to you know ensure that everyone out there Every mother has a good day. And also, I would like to wish all the mothers here a, a good uh, mother's uh, month, like uh, Sylvia said. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It's good to be reminded of it. Everything is supposed to be Mother's Day. But uh, it's, it's, it's good to be reminded because we, we tend to forget. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we also wish the fathers that are mothers to their children as well. So, <laughs> actually, we wish bring them you, actually, I bring you a very important <laughs> point. I mean, this Mother's Day, is, uh, Father's Day thing, we have to be put in the right context. Some exactly. of us are playing dual roles. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we need to acknowledge those that are playing those roles that. If and I know, I know Divesh, Divesh is good at that. You know, Divesh, <laughs> shape is not as strange to you, my brother. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very important role. It's actually, I mean, bringing, I mean, taking care of our own future, if we want to put it in the much more right context. If you don't look after these kids, you know, you know what will come out. Mm. Mm. In fact, we should we should we should be cautious up to when they are young, when they are teenagers. Only then we can we can really relax. Hopefully, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Um, I want us to. I'm very excited about this topic. Um, and, and we can see that uh, I, I don't go off these themes because some of us. Our jobs actually deal with this thing, this topic every day. The topic of uh, being fully present as you follow up on conversation. It's, it's one of those very easy to take for granted uh, type of uh, expertise or skills that actually decide, determine uh, uh, a difference between a good and a very bad host to anchor. And these days I'm very much wide awake when I listen to conversations, especially these political conversations because of our elections. It's quite very fascinating that uh, the, the guests they are hosting are not very easy. And, um, and sometimes you have to listen uh, selectively as well because you can be clouded by too many messages that you have to um, deal with. But anyway, maybe let me start by asking each one of you to share with us your understanding of dynamics or challenges 
of making a very good follow-up to an immediate statement by, by your guest. And then we can go into some of the techniques. I, I, I don't know about you, but these days I, I'm trying by all means to apply this, this themes, these concepts that you are discussing. And thank you for being part of this journey because it gives me a reason to, to practice what we preach. Over to you guys. Anyone that has reflected a bit uh, on, on this theme, you don't have to think hard about it, that it's a critical aspect of conversation. In Lakota, you know, the rule says that uh, you are not allowed to introduce a, a new theme when the previous speaker was speaking on the existing theme and you, you, you cannot move on without either acknowledging them, reflecting a bit, or paraphrasing, or thanking them for closing the topic and then ask if you can introduce the, the new topic. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really the gist of it. And it's powerful to, if you think of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I can just come in there, um, Coach Sima. Um, what you just said is very critical. Um, and I think it's it's something that that is applicable to most of us. You know, when we say that, um, when it's said that um, listening is a skill, um, you know, it takes it takes one to actually be conscious to listening. Um, you you basically have to prepare your mind to say now I am going to listen. I don't think and and I don't know maybe with other people, but for me, I've also realized that it's it it wasn't one of my strongest uh, points until when I I basically had to consciously tell myself that you know now I have to listen because we take for granted in the difference of of listening and hearing <laughs> you know so one has to um has to really put yourself in the frame of mind that says now i am going to listen um so that you pay attention to what is being said you know um uh, um the 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 example of when you say thank you for this session because it allows you an opportunity to practice I actually find it as a very important um, um, tool to actually have to practice it. Um, and thus, once you practice and you go into a session where you are now the host and um, your, your, your client or, or the person that you are, you are hosting is basically talking. In most cases, we fall prey of the fact that um, you might have spoken to them before and kind of had a bit of some background about them or background about the topic that they want to talk about. And um, therefore, by the time you are live um, on the show, um, you kind of have that information. So when they speak or when they elaborate something, one tends not to maybe not really listen attentively or consciously make yourself to listen because you're already thinking of, okay, um, I kind of know what he's going to say. Let me prepare myself to go into the next question that I want to ask. And you end up not really paying attention and making your mind to be alert onto the fact that this is your turn now to listen before you could actually um, think of what next to say. I have found it in the Lokota, um, as I said, I have um, experienced it uh, uh, live now recently. And um, um, I have actually noticed, you know, in the in the second, when when there's a Pijo and there's a Lokota there sitting, yo, um, <laughs> the, my experience on, on, on the last one that I had, obviously um, the topic was was a bit harsh onto the fact that um, um, the villagers um, and some people from the from the royal house were not seeing eye to eye on the matter, and you know the Hadi just decided they were just gonna be disruptive, 
you know, when someone opens the mouth, when the man stands up and they know this is the one on the on the left side, is the left winger, and they wanted to make sure that she that he doesn't get an opportunity to talk. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> they they as soon as just he just stands up because they know him, they will just start by howling, no, you know, and saying all those other stuff. And it came to an to a situation where they didn't even realize that the poor man um, only had certain information that he never had just as he was coming to Lekhotla. And all that he wanted to do was to repent from what he's been doing to the royal um, people um, um, in, 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 in some few weeks or, or months ago. So mm -hmm. because they just held him, you know, it took a while. It's just that he was persistent, that he really wanted to state what he wanted to state. But, um, you know, that's when I said to myself that, you know, the issue of putting your mind consciously to say, let me now just listen. And as I say, it's a skill. It takes it takes one to learn to actually listen to what um, the next person is going to say. And do you, you, you have to put it as a frame of mind to be at that level. It's a so skill, the, it's I, a skill, and you mm. must want to. Yes. Right. Yes. True. Mm. Let's welcome uh, Vitya. Uh, Vitya, welcome to the forum. Thanks for joining us. I know it's very late in India, but we appreciate you joining us. Greetings to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sam, and hello to everyone. I just uh, was on another call and I noticed uh, there was an invite. I couldn't attend the previous session and I saw some very interesting topics. So uh, thanks for uh, inviting me, Sam. And uh, I look forward to uh, picking up some interesting uh, things and uh, enlighten myself in the process. <laughs> you're welcome and you're part of the family. I hope you have voted. Uh, where, how far is your elections at the moment? Because you oh. go in, in, in cycles, right? <laughs> I know, good memory you have. Uh, so it's happening, um, I think, in about uh, four or five phases. Uh, we will know the election results uh, on the 4th of June. So mm -hmm. uh, so probably, yeah, another 20 days, maybe, yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. it's all because we have 30 different uh, provincial states. Uh, mm. And they're going in phases. Uh, yeah, the reason they're doing that is because uh, we have a lot of, uh, of uh, men and women serving in the armed forces uh, who are all posted in different areas. So they need to go to their home province and vote. So they're planning in such a way that uh, the armed forces people get a chance to vote. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Krista, we have hours on the 29th of May, so 16 days to go. We will be yeah. voting. Yeah. Hours yeah. Are one day, uh, and then we start gluing to the TV to watch the results. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a way, if it happens in one day, it, you know, it, it's fine, right? Like, uh, but uh, typical Bollywood style, there has to be climax and acting like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Great. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Vichy, for joining. Yeah. yeah uh, any any take on what we have just had now as a way of looking at this topic? We will talk about a couple of techniques because really for me, as similar to uh, Sylvia, it's really one of my efforts to, to really try to learn, to listen for meaning and understanding and really postpone responding because we have the tendency of just responding without actually processing what we have just had. And that that tends to be very tends to be very disrespectful to whoever wow. was on the floor. And this technique teaches teach us to to be mindful and appreciate that when you are holding a conversation, you are intending to develop some alignment and then and, and understanding, appreciation, empathy 
and really understand where someone is coming from. And when you do that, and when you respond later, and it, and it's informed by what you understood, it's very powerful. Oh. Actually, this reminds and, seven principles, highly effective people. Um, it says, seek first to understand, then be understood. Mm. Uh, I want to confirm, like Sylvia has said, that I also had the weakness of uh, uh, listening in order to respond without understanding what the person is saying. And you find that uh, people become so frustrated because you misunderstood them and you responded before you understood them. So yeah. I, I agree with Sylvia that uh, we need to listen in order to understand so that we respond appropriately. Thanks. Mm. And then, that's a very powerful uh, expertise. It's not easy. It requires discipline because it has been proven that uh, human beings by nature want to be listened to. It's nice to be listened to, whether you're talking sense or not. So, so you just be aware of the fact that we default to talking. But when you take a seat back and you listen with curiosity, it's amazing what, what you hear and what you learn. This will be when you can't wait for someone to finish because you are ready to talk. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I don't know how many of you have, 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 have come across uh, uh, Otto Sharma is a, is, a, is a professor at MIT, and one of his uh, famous um, theories is called the, the theory U, which is, which is um, basically a listening model. And, and I think uh, I, like, I like the fact that it's, it's very transformational. And he says that uh, there are various modes of listening. And, and one all common mode which makes us to be impatient to listen is that of listening by downloading. Basically, and, I, and you'll let me know if you, you have experienced this, that that is when you feel that you already know everything that you are about to listen to. And this happened commonly in teams that uh, we are part of and we know each other and we tend to say, ah, I know what uh, Divesh is going to say. I know him. But it, when the moment Divesh opens his mouth, you even help him finish his sentences because you think you know everything he's going to say. And that is the first level of mode of listening. It's listening by downloading. And we do it a lot when we, as parents as well, or when we are the leaders who don't really believe that we can hear anything exciting from our subordinates. So we want them to talk quickly so that we can tell them our mind. And that's the first mode of listening, it's called download. The children want to suggest what to eat on Sunday. You already know what they are going to ask for. And before they even finish, you tell them, shut up. And then you tell them what they were going to say and that you tell them that it's not going to happen. Or you agree with them. Then they say, no, mom, that's not what we meant to. And you will still not humble yourself and say, oh, sorry, I, I hate myself. You still continue uh, suppressing. Any, any experience with that? The, the, that first mode of listening. And we'll, I'll share the, the links to, to Otto Sharma's theory. I use it quite a lot in my, in my leadership facilitation, and I'm still learning it myself. Any reflection on that kind? From your practical experience, not necessarily from the, from the model. Uh, I'm sure as, as, as child in, when in your life, you must have been shut up by your leaders and your parents. 
Uh, do you do that? And what happens to people when you shut them down? Like, and what could be dangerous in a listening by downloading? Yes, Tendani. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I just want to just give a, a bit of a view when it comes to the fact that we we like to be listened to and we don't want to. Um, just of recent, I want to give an example. Just of recent, we had um our community, our community meeting. And typically, so we know there is an old man who will always want to give his view. And we know that he doesn't get straight to the point. He would want to marry a story before he gets to the point that anybody wants. So, and it happens often. And this time around, he did the very same thing, narrated the story before he gets to the point. And before he could even finish the story, and everybody was already howling, no, just get to the point. Just tell us why you raised your hand. Why? And we, just, we ended up not even hearing what, was, what exactly he wanted to tell us. Because now we had, there was a development of new conversation around us. But this is what we do. Every time of the meeting, we will give us a narration or a story that is not even related to. But according to him, he feels that the story is giving us related to the point that he wants to do. So, and he finds that even media of the meeting has now fallen into the trap of joining the majority who will, you know, shout and howl onto the, you know, the old man to say, no, look, he just gets straight to the point. So then you find it very difficult for us to understand what is it that he wanted to say. And if you listen properly to what the old man normally gives or whatever you comment here, he would give serious window that takes a trained listening skill to understand what is he's saying. Because you will then later digest on what was he really saying, find that you know we actually need the point. We need what the old man is saying. So it is very difficult to be different. Um, as Sophia was saying that it is a skill to, to really listen so that you can understand. So yeah, I think we do fall into that trap of not listening because we think we know what the person is about to say and then we end up listening. Mm. Of course, if it was a natural team, uh, let's say it's a team that works together on a project, and you are the leader of that team, and you have this particular member that has a tendency to go take a long route to arrive at a point, you will address it in terms of uh, developing a team 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 uh, culture. Yeah. But, uh, but sometimes, depending on what the meeting is about, some some conversations requires uh, context. If, if it wasn't because it's a person that you know already that always tells the story, it will be worth a while to be curious to understand the story, right? Exactly. Yeah. So so it 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 goes both ways. That particular person that takes too long to arrive at a point. Uh, needs to be made aware of the fact that uh, he's stretching it too much to a point that he tests the patience of the people, and the people perhaps are justified to to get to the point because of some obvious pressures in this case could be tough. But if you are in a conversation in a radio and the story carries a lot of meaning, then you may want to suspend some of the other points you had planned to address because maybe this one is important. And that's where the moderation is important. And that is exactly the challenge we are all faced with. When you are moderating, you have to make a judgment call. Is it worth a while to allow the story to unfold? Or is it worth a while the interest of the listeners to kindly ask the person to, to, to wrap it up and come get to the point because the story is not going to help. 
And how do you intervene without actually shutting up your own guests? Uh, Andulela? Hi, Mr. Sam. Um, firstly, I do apologize for coming in late. And, you know, with what you are saying about the listening model, I think there's a certain level of maturity that is required, you know, just to be able to not finish someone's sentence when they are speaking, especially as a host, because also indirectly you are also thinking of, okay, fine, what is the next follow-up question or the next follow-up conversation? Or, you know, are you now at a probing stage or what stage in the conversation are you in, you know, to enable you then to understand what to do at that moment? So that's the first part. It's uh, I'm realizing actually now that there's you know, it it takes a lot of maturity, you know, just to to say no to listening by downloading, and actually saying, you know what, I'm going to allow my guests to finish the sentence. I'm going to allow the conversation, but also be mature enough to know when to then jump in and say, okay, now that we have exhausted this. And then over and above that, you know, in our previous session, we spoke about there's nothing wrong in being silent, you know, silent being the most powerful part. And I think then being silent then means that you have the maturity to know that you are listening to understand. And that's why you won't have a problem with silence. But, you know, I grew up and my mother would always say, get to the point, my child, <laughs> you know. So I grew up in an environment where I've always wanted, I've, I've never really taken note of the story, but I've always been chasing what is the point here? Where are we going? Let's get there and never really taken time to further explore the journey and enjoy listening to someone to their fullest. You know, even now as, as you are talking and you want to finish you know, your statement, I'm like, okay, fine. How am I going to come into this conversation? What am I going to say? And what is the most impactful way I can package what I'm going to say? So there's also that subconscious mind where you also then are trying to say, how are you going to respond? You want to also package what you're going to say and make sure that you respond in a way that shows that you are listening to the person. And the best way to do that is to help them finish the sentence, or at least that's what you think, you know, but you're not realizing that you are missing out on the journey of actually understanding, you know, what is this person saying, you know, and sometimes you can talk about a book or you can talk about anything. And because you think you've heard about it before, you don't want to listen and you want to finish that story, but you don't really understand that you might learn something completely different by actually hearing about a theory or a concept that you've heard about before. Because we live in a world where nothing, I'm not saying nothing is new, 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 but some of these nuances are there too. It's, it almost um, comes as a reminder to say, okay, you've heard about this, but what is then the journey of it and what is it that can you learn from it? So it's the maturity, Mr. Sam, just to close to say, you know, being able to respond as a host and being able to continuously engage someone, you know, without finishing the sentence, but also listening to them at the same time and being silent when you need to be silent. So I'm just realizing that there's a, a certain level of maturity that is required to actually become a host. Mm. Mm. And the discipline to, to focus on what you want to achieve in hosting a, a conversation. So, yeah, thank you so much for that input, Andulela. Now, let's move to the next, the next mode of listening. If you think of theory U as the U letter U, and you starting from the left to the right, so the listening by downloading will be the first on the left side of the U, uh, letter U. So as you improve down that line, very much similar to the transformational curve, 
the next level is now mode of listening is called that is called factual listening. In other words, if you, the, if the next improvement level from downloading is where you are able to switch off your inner voice of judgment and you focus on what you don't know. So, so, so somebody talks, they say, okay, I've listened to this person talking, but let me surprise myself. Let me switch off my inner voice and not be judgmental and, and, and practice downloading. Look for facts in what this person is saying, irrespective of my views of this person and what I know about them. Right? So, so, so that next level is called factual listening. And this is, this is more of a scientific approach. You are not really necessarily engaging your emotions and your feelings. You are just actually looking for, for facts in what you are hearing. That's another level which uh, requires, again, that discipline to say, this person might be saying a lot of stuff, most of which you think is, doesn't make sense. But can you still be disciplined enough to look for facts in the midst of all those what you are hearing? Because at the end of the day, it's your duty to get something from what this person is saying. If he says 100%, can you look for 10% that is important and is factual for the conversation? And as a host or a moderator, or in this case, an anchor, that's what you are looking for. And forget about the rest that you said that you think is garbage. Again, suspending your judgment, switch off your inner voice, try to extract the meaning from what is being said. Again, it's hard, but, but if you are able to do that, you are getting better in your listening skill. Tagarabul, you have heard hosted stories before, and, and, and you have had subject matter expert saying hundreds of things. And how do you then get the best out of that without saying, hey, they talk too much? Uh, Sam, I'll put nar that narrative back to a scenario where uh, you do a mentoring or a coaching. Uh, one thing which I've learned in this space is that the less you talk, the more you listen, the better for yourself. But if you pick up in a process that uh, a person is speaking continuously, you've got a way of in the conversation of um, maybe said, hold on with that conversation, ask the question, so put the person back to the right trail. Because sometimes we go off the trail very easy. So that's where the dynamics of that comes to the picture. And uh, uh, one of the things that I normally do, I normally ask uh, and uh, and I think those guys who have done some director studies and see it, they, they often ask that question. I said, uh, have you ever gone to a class where they teach you parenting? So you find that that class does not exist. Uh, but you learn by your personal experience and then in the process, whatever you learn, what people are saying, and the plan is the correct one. So in the base of that, also the skill of listening skill is more appropriate to say, the more you listen, the better, and the more understanding and making sure that you're focused and concentrating your conversation helps a lot. Can we still allow the people to say all they want to say and still be disciplined to say, this is what out of the 10 things you have said. This is one, two, three that I'm taking away from what you have said without shutting them off. In other words, are you still able not to be distracted by every noises that you are hearing and still uh, yeah. extract the facts and engage the, the, the guest further on only three rather than the rest of the seven? The, the the key question is the focus and the concentration of what the person is saying. So, so when the person is at, uh, this going off the destruction or of the rail, and 
disrupt very professionally, not unprofessional, by saying, but uh, you continue saying this. However, we should be focusing on this. What are you saying about this? So it's to put back to the uh, appropriate aspect. Mm-hmm. Rather than letting that person. Because uh, Otto Shama in his model is saying, as human being, we have our inner voice. Now he said, for you to listen for facts, be disciplined to switch off your inner voice of judgment and focus on what you don't know in the whole conversation. And, and this is, this is and it exactly the point. If it was in a coaching, uh, you, you, it's not for you to judge. You will still, exactly as you said, Rakula, you will still redirect a person. In other ways, you wouldn't be reprimanding the person for talking nonsense. Uh, you ask is to take out what they've said, and uh, suspend your judgment and refocus them on the three that you think are the most factual of all the inputs, right? And the question is, do you have that discipline and that 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 uh, intent to switch off your inner voice of judgment and focus on what is factually important for the conversation? And I think, Sylvia, you'll agree with me, uh, and, and Divesh as well, you have hosted a number of shows where you had, where this subject matter experts in our VUT program, that the ones you start need to uh, understand that the, 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 the expert that you are hosting is the most important person for the day. You basically um, need to um, assist them to say, what they want to say to to the audience, you know. So you've got to kind of help them to 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 be able to um, narrate uh, whatever important facts that must come in. And I think this is where the purpose of listening come in because on 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 that note, if you consciously want to allow them to um, have a platform to say something good. You, you are more likely to can jump in to try and help him, <laughs> you know, to, um, to, to narrate or to explain or to go deeper into something that you feel the audience really need to listen to or need to hear. And that is where one has to draw a line on not to fall prey of not allowing him that opportunity or assisting them to 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 explain in detail while at the same time you are also trying to um listen and not not to pass any judgment in terms of because to wh- one can say i am listening and i can hear that this this whole this um um expect is still a bit uncomfortable at the beginning of the show because sometimes they are like um uh, maybe shy or they are they are they are kind of um um scared um at 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 the beginning of of the show so you find that they don't really uh, go deeper into explaining so you want to try to uh, give them the comfort um to be able to narrate further uh, because already when you are doing that you kind of have listened to the shyness that oh um this person i'm going to have to help him so that he can be basically be able to say what he wants to say but right at that time um is the line that i'm saying can be a bit thin because you are kind of judging uh, <laughs> that um um he's not going to say much and let me assist him to say it but i think the thin line then causes one to go to this frame of mind that I'm talking about, that you need to consciously prepare yourself to be to be um, um, quiet and listen so that you can then um, listen and hear that I would have expected him to have said one, two, three, four, but he only said one and four. And you can only hear that he did one and four through listening that two and three are missed, you know, he missed the two and three. And then only then you can, you can then allow your expect as you are hosting to actually mm-hmm. um, say more. 
you know, because um, the 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 example that I had or the practical example was, you know, when I hosted um, the professor whom he thought his role that he played for the student, that he fulfilled for the student. Maybe it was not uh, something that was like so highly, deeply needed and not to realize on how much impact it had um, on, on the students. And therefore, while I was hosting him, I needed him to have the confidence to understand that what he was doing, the role that he was fulfilling is actually impacting the students so much. Even the students need it. They want to come and see him even uh, extra classes or, or on, on, on their free time. But he wasn't saying it. <laughs> so I had to listen to him in order to make sure that at least he does um, elaborate to the fact that the students do find it um, um, very much um, needed. And then they even come to me um, during their free classes or when they are about to write an exam. But you could see that to him, it's just like, ah, it's one of those things. So it's not necessary. I don't need to, to say it. So that listening then come in um, and you you basically allow him to do it. So what I'm trying to say in that is that um, much as one has to suspend the judgment, I think maybe it's 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 um, the judgment as in um, what could be on on a negative side or the judgment as in I'm seeing a gap there that is not going to be filled and it's an important gap or it, it will create some void and I don't want it to be missed. So that's where I had find it that um, let me first listen fully, let me consciously put myself into listening to the fact that is this professor going to say all the five points or he only said two of them and if he said two, did I hear which three did he miss? So um, yeah, I think that... that and those, that, those are the those are the facts that you could extract. Yeah. Uh, those are the missing facts that you could actually pick because you were fully present. Because one of yeah. the one of the requirements to be able to pick up these things is you should not be distracted yourself. You should be really mm. fully present. Mm. Mm. Be able to do that. Uh, in social people of being we use it during our counseling, where you find that one client come in and raise a complaint about a spouse or a family member, and then we call that spouse or a family member and we interview both of them. We first give the, the person who uh, came and complained the opportunity to speak. And as you speak, uh, I, I, I take a neutral, a neutral stand, I listen. And then I give another, uh, the one, the person they are complaining about the opportunity to speak. I also listen without uh, putting any judgment from myself. As they are speaking, I'm, I am packaging uh, important information that I'm going to assist them on when I recommend the way forward to them. And that way forward I'm recommending, it's a recommendation, it's, a, it's not an imposition. And then I give them both the opportunity to uh, respond to my uh, recommendation. And ultimately we make a contract that uh, uh, this is the agreement that we agree on the three of us. And then we make, an agreement to meet again and make a follow-up after some time. Yeah, that's the principle of listening without being having any judgment on what they are saying. Indeed, indeed. Uh, thanks, Vitya. I know it's very late. Uh, uh, please uh, feel free to drop off. Thanks for, for joining. Uh, yeah. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thanks so much, Sam, and the rest of the, the, in the participants. I don't get a chance to say hello at all, uh, but uh, you know, love to hear the recording at a later date. It's quite late here. I'm going to log off now. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. All the best.
Thanks. Yeah, and then welcome, welcome, Maynard. Uh, came in the middle of the discussion. Yes, indeed. That thanks, thanks, Dadra Mutla for for that uh, 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 example. Exactly. So, so, so you you need to get facts, and and that is that is the second mode of listening, and uh, we can proceed. There. And I'm 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 assuming that uh, not everybody is familiar with this model, and. Mostly, Otto Shama used this model to for coaching. But thanks for bringing the other perspective, Brother, where you are actually giving facts so that you can assist the the clients. In this case, the couple, because you need facts. You can't be seen to be taking charge sides, and you can't be seen to be judging. Uh, you need to play that objective role, and in hosting a show. That that could also be very very fundamental. Uh, that you 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 try and get to get the to the facts. And now in this case, we are following up. So you need to, as Sylvia said, you need to know when you after the person has finished talking, that following up must say to us that you have been listening and you are actually addressing the facts rather than ignoring what you was being said. The, the third mode, uh, we're going down the curve, or the U curve, uh, is empathetic, listening empathetically. So remember the first one was downloading where you shut them off. The second one is now you are looking for facts for charging. Uh, the third one is the empathetic mode. That is where you are able to see the situation through the other person's eye and more away from your own agenda and you are connecting on the feeling level. So you're going a little bit deep. I don't know whether in Dadira Muta it's allowed, it can't tell you, that you can actually bring your feelings into it. We say in coaching uh, that it's important to, to recognize what, what you are hearing is doing to your own feeling without necessarily being distracted. But you cannot pretend that you are not able to empathize with this person, whereby you say, I'm not going to try to be emotionally affected. I just want to be uh, on my head and, and, and listen. So, so I don't know what you do in a counseling situation, uh, but he's saying that it's very important to empathize with a person. And you normally will, you, you try to put yourself in their position and also experience the feeling that situation. So in a, in, a, in a talk show, I mean, when we're listening to the chair manager from, from ASCO, a lot of emotions was come, were coming through Divesh uh, when he was experiencing, when he was telling us about the, uh, being an activist in terms of uh, human development or in terms of development of your own self. I couldn't help it, but actually feel the emotive part of the of the message that he was sharing with us. Divesh? Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, you could get his passion uh, coming through and what we had tried to do then. And that's obviously because we could hear not him necessarily uh, using the words, but the tone he used, uh, we, could, uh, we could pick up that uh that that feeling that he had gone through and then how he's taking that relaying it into the work that he's doing as well sir mm. and it can be very just frustrating to a guest when he's at that emotion level and you don't appreciate and you don't actually pick that as message you're just listening to the words meanwhile the tone is communicating something much deeper and I remember you, Divaj, even say that is ESCOM aware of the asset they have in you? How about this thing being taken across the entire organization? You were actually edifying him. You were affirming him and, and listening to him from an external point of view that this is something deeper. Maybe the guy might not be recognized or being realized or being, 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 being edified. And you immediately say, this is really a fortunate situation for ESCOM. I wish 
it could be actually applied across the entire organization, Dinesh. Yes, Sap. Um, it was indeed a, 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 a sort of dual skill, one of uh, listening attentively to what he's saying empathetically. Um, it, it also uh, leads to a point we had raised in our previous show where we, we, we say we need to pick up the vibrations uh, between yourself as the anchor, the host, uh, as well as with the vibrations you're getting from the guest. And hopefully you are on the same level and then relay that same vibration over to our audience. And the, the art of listening, um, I would even say the, the, the previous two, that of downloading, uh, that of uh, um, being empathetic, as well as that being looking for factual information when, when you are having a conversation is all about being able to be present and get that vibration that you uh, you're getting from your from your guest through the 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 words he's using uh, the facts he's sharing the tone in, in his language and of course that's also wrapped up against all the planning that you have done for the show and 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 when the show is actually taking place, listening to how the show is transpiring, so that you know mm. how to then take charge of that uh, conversation without overshadowing your guests. Sam, mm. absolutely, because of course those emotions and feelings are messy, and if you don't lash on that, if you don't get them into bring them into the conversation. The past day, the guest and the listeners, my experience has been called. Great. So that is emphasized, empathizing with what with your guest. And, and remember, at the background, your listeners are actually, they could be actually be weeks away. They could be in a different state and you don't even realize. And then when you speak to it, you could really, the message could even seek very, very well, even deeper. The last uh, mode, which is really the bottom of the curve, is where you integrate everything. And he calls it the, uh, a generative mode of lesson. So, so here, you basically have all this that we've discussed, and, and you are listening from the deeper space. And an imaging space of the future possibilities. So from, from what you you are listening, just not for now, but you're saying, plucking your head, heart, and God. You say, what am I learning from this? So you, you emerge after the conversation as a different person with new ideas. In other words, although you were hosting the show for the listeners, but you you yourself, actually, because you were fully present, and, and and you use both all your your heart way your head where you listen for facts your heart where you have the empathy and the guard where you really really now get the feelings messages and you say how does how do I deal with this type of facts in the future and now for instance and that's where now you start really. You, you are literally transformed. If I may use you again, Divesh, you interesting enough, we, we actually started even talking about bringing him back and making the focus on him as an instrument to actually conscientize other people in other companies. And, 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 and interesting enough, practically on his side, I'm told that after the show, the university engaged him there and there, and they, they even concluded that they needed to take students to visit his plan. So in other words, the, the purpose of the conversation, if you listen generatively, it, it will, you can't help it, but you have some ideas emerging out of that. And it helps you really become a different kind of a person going forward. And yet it was just a conversation. So generative listening means you, you, is hate, is hate, heart, gut. It's, it's a wholeness of listening. 
And they are saying that if you listen generatively, you can't help it, but you will learn something from your conversation with your guest. I mean, can you imagine if all of us can put ourselves as a host and, 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 and facilitators or, or, or anchors? But yes, I'm anchoring the show, but I myself, I'm allowing myself to, to actually be, to, to be transformed by what more than the listeners that are listening to the two of you conversing. During our counseling, when you finish with the, the, the session, when you come into the next yeah, which uh, your network is... Uh, you use what you have learned for session. Uh, that is why we use... Our... In, in social work, we we keep improving uh, after each and every session, uh, supported by the theories that we have learned. Uh, and therefore, each and every session... Uh, we use the improvement from the previous session in order to improve uh, on that session. Mm. Mm. So, so let, let's take it, bring it back to the to the hosting of the show. So you 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 you, you could transform yourself and your guests okay. plus the listeners by following a model like this, especially when you suspend your your judgment, and you allow the show to flow, but you are curious to see where it takes you to, and indeed, you, 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 in that way, you, you, you really represent the listeners because you have allowed yourself to be part of it. I don't know what what the other people's views are and whether this is practical in terms of hosting, but I. I, I do believe that uh, you could energize your guests. You could actually, your show could become very impactful when you don't come with preconceived ideas as a as a host of the show. Any 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 comment there, and and uh, what do you think of this model, and also the inputs from that that I'm with, uh, confirming some of the points that you have shared. Have you managed to catch up with where we are, uh, Maynard? I'm Denzel. Good evening, colleagues. Uh, yo, I'm trying to recover from what happened here because, like, uh, I just joined the show and yeah, I'm still grabbing all the information together. Um, I'll, 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 I'll comment when the show goes on. All right, cool. Yeah, we, we're sharing the, the Theory U model by Otto Sham, but the idea here is that for you to be able to follow up when you are hosting a show, the fundamental thing to do is to, is to learn to be a very good listener. Because if you're going to follow up and, and we pick up that you have not really been fully present, and you are not addressing facts and you are not really empathetic, uh, then it's going to be unfortunate. See, Sylvia? No, I just I just want to just ask um, uh, Coach Tim, the, the last one, you said it's um, generative mode. I'm, yes. I'm not sure if I... Or generative. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, that's, where you. You, that's where you listen from a deeper space. It's almost mm -hmm. like you immerse yourself into the feelings, the emotions, the facts, uh, all that. Uh, uh, you are not uh, pretending to be not affected by what you have hearing. You've been hearing, and it's good that in the other mood I say is that you do get affected. You do actually uh, uh, get to appreciate what your 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 partner is going through, and 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 that that messages that come through, the emotions and feelings evoked. 
uh, using your head, heart, gut, then to help you to emerge out of it and even figure out what the next steps are, which, which is quite very interesting because I can imagine in counseling, this is important. Um, okay. Or in coaching, by the way. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Prasep. I think also from me, uh, the way I could also understand that uh, generative uh, listening is it would feed uh, your the conversation towards a lessons learned for yourself, a takeaway, and then of, often as well, you might actually get some outcome from the conversation which wasn't necessarily planned for like in your example of the TUT and ESCOM show where after the discussion we had come to a realization that hey this is some asset that ESCOM should actually expand upon it did actually touch on an affirmation towards the guest but it was actually through the conversation and through the generative listening throughout the show that you came to the realization that the there was a potential outcome, which was saying, is this, is this something that ESCOM should take towards, uh, you know, countrywide program? Uh, thank you, Sam. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Uh, uh, when you bring the show to the end, uh, as a host, uh, and even us as moderator, we we, we will reflect. We call it the checking out, right? And and then and and out of checking out, that's when you will actually express your own experience as as a, as a host or a moderator or anchor. But also the guests, we tend we tend we tend we tend to ask them also to reflect what has the conversation done for them. And if you've really taken them that deep, they are able to at that time. They are no longer in control of what is going on. They, they, they are almost like they're gonna give you what they feel and what they they experienced. And it's often at that stage where we get we get to know how how impactful our conversation is. And that for me, it's uh, is the time when you you get feedback for yourself. I don't know those of you have hosted shows uh, and. When you're at that stage and it has gone on very well, uh, do you ever say, okay, I was the host, but I was also transformed, or I have been educated? And, and of course, uh, believing that the same experience you are uh, going through, your listeners are also going through it. So some of the points I wanted that to show you actually time is, is not on our side. The the seven active listening techniques that I got from this uh, very well mind dot uh, com are almost speaking to the points we raised on Otto Sharma's uh, theory. You uh, they say that uh, the techniques include being fully present in the conversation. That's point one. So we have already said that that if you are distracted already, you are not going to be a good ghost. And that's why perhaps you might want to excuse yourself or you need a co-facilitator, a co-host to play more role. Uh, but the, the key requirement is you need to be fully present. Secondly, you need to pay attention to non-verbal cues. Uh, noticing those, noticing those non-verbal cues. One may argue that uh, in a in a virtual digital online, you are not going to be able to see non-verbal cues. But the fact is, you do, you do feel them. Uh, when somebody, that's why when you are you are talking, uh, where they are not seeing you, you must always still use your body language gestures because we they they have a way of in being impactful on your voice, but also the energy that you you emit, even though we don't see you, but we can feel it. And, and often we can imagine you in that conversation. Don't ever say, they can't see me, and therefore I'm not going to have any 
body language gestures, you are actually disadvantaging you. That there are more. The social learning, we call it uh, listening to the undertones. Yeah. So as, as, as you interview your, your, your clients, you look into their nonverbal communication. Yeah. And um, you integrate them into your understanding of what is going on. Mm. And when you respond, you also try to cover the, 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 the nonverbal communication that you, get, you got through their behaviors. As you speak, yeah. they, be, they behave and they show you that they, they want to say something which they are not saying. So yeah. when you respond to you also respond to those nonverbal communications mm. in the, the, the so, the so and, called undertones yeah and in the undertones in this case that would like could that be the tonation of their voice yes 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 because and those are messages those are the messages you can take and and, and play them back to them and ask them to reflect a bit on yes like you say that uh, as you were saying this point, I could sense that you were struggling to come out. Your voice was struggling, was trembling, or you were choking. Does that have anything to to do with this topic? Do you want to talk about that? And then and often you 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 will be amazed how they then say what they were not uh, comfortable to say, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. You do reflect on what they have said so that then they they clarify on what they confirm or not confirm what you shall be saying to them as part yeah. of their nonverbal communication. Yeah. And 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 that there are more as inexperienced hosts uh, or or anglers, these are these are really serious messages we miss. Or not the inexperienced but yeah. unconscious host. These are very valuable inputs or messages that that we're missing, and 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 they, they give away when we don't see because we are not alerted, we are not conscious of it, and we are not trying hard to see what they are not saying. Right? Yeah, but you can you can detect that through their voice that this person is not free or. This person wants to communicate something, but is not communicating. They can detect it from their voices. So what we are saying, uh, Tendani and, and Rapula, from a hosting point of view, and I'm sure you are practicing this because you have experience now, is it is very important not only to listen to their voices, but also pick up these other nuances that are associated with this interaction. And there... This lie your school in terms of uh, exciting the listeners. Yes, um, thank you, Sam. Um, when it comes to a voice, I've realized that it's very important um, because um, it says a lot because your listeners, obviously, they cannot see you, but what comes out of you has a lot of meaning. It puts a lot of weight to the topic or to get the, your listeners into the mood to listen because you cannot sound tired or sound upset because your voice can really tell that this person is completely absent from the conversation. You're just doing it because you're there. But if mm. you sound present, then it uh, gives your listeners more motivation um, you know, to continue with the, with the show. What do you do, Tendani, as a uh... As an anchor, and you pick up that your your guest is punchy, the voice is not energetic. Uh, maybe there's something that is distracting them, or they are not yet fully present, uh, and you are picking it up. What do you do? Um, I think the, the the first thing would be to look at the maybe the questions that we pose to the guest. Uh, you might find that that is really putting them off. Um, you would want to look at how can you then divert the conversation, you know, to get them to maybe a more interesting 
um, something they want to converse about than what you have asked them at that moment. Beautiful. You have just mentioned point number four, that, that asking open-ended questions to encourage further response. <laughs> so sometimes we do ask very tight questions that put them, force them to give a yes and no answer. And that becomes boring because now they, they, they are not given an opportunity to expand shape. But if you ask them an open-ended question, they, they tend to really bring out their best. What will you do? I mean, an open quest ended question will, is like, if you are the one facing this situation, what would you do? They can't give you yes and no answer there, right? It's going to force them to think creatively. And all of a the sudden, they access their inner base or their inner source of creativity. And all of a sudden, they wake up and they like them because now you're giving them a big open, open ended space for them to go home with your question. Yes. That's an art, isn't it? It is, it is an art. I, I remember with um, uh, a graphic designer that we had, uh, we, his transition from the country he was coming from into South Africa was not an easy journey. And we, I could tell that. Um, the experience was not so pleasant for him to talk about. But then I quickly picked that there was a moment that he liked when he got into South Africa. So I quickly diverted uh, the whole conversation for him to give us an ex full experience. Then I changed. I said, you know what, can you please give me an experience um, when you got to a certain place where he was encouraged by, you know, a, a, a client. He was working in a restaurant and a client encouraged him. And immediately I could tell that he liked the story, the experience, more than the transition into the country. Exactly. And, and, uh, and Rabula, in coaching, uh, we, we have a, a very common follow-up question to say, tell me more. <laughs> Simple, no innocent question like, tell me more. And then you know what? Well, they go and fetch it. They, they, they go and deliver a full track of load of facts. So sometimes, sometimes there is a question of clarify what do you mean by this? Yeah. Uh, or ex let's explore more on that subject matter. But yeah. on the same note, uh, uh, Sam, uh, when you have a conversation with a person who's got passion on, on a topic, on a subject matter, uh, you need to be on our toes because that person can go even over the board. Yeah. So yeah. clarify more. Um, what do you mean by this? How do you uh, sort of explore on this side? It helps a lot in terms of uh, uh, putting a topic back to its own uh, a, a process or agenda we supposed to be carried on. Well, in the Darabula, if we have a subject matter expert that is flowy, then you have a very nice problem <laughs> because they are coming out. Now, now you have a you have to apply another technique to 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 take a judgment call whether to to entice them to move on <laughs> or to stay on because they can stay on one on theme one theme forever, and you start having listeners dropping off because. They've had enough, but the person is still sitting on. That's again one of the dilemmas of being a, a, a anchor. Yes, you are right. But uh, that's what I'm saying on that aspect. You need to think on your toes at the very given time to make sure that yeah. you mm -hmm. still have traction on, on the floor. Thanks. Yeah, yeah indeed. The next point is that uh, we spoke about this last time, uh, uh, active listening technique. It's uh, uh, paraphrasing and reflecting on what you have just uh, had. That's powerful. Um, especially if uh, sometimes you're not quite sure whether you understood the person well and, 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 and then you don't want to say, repeat yourself. And then you will technically say, uh, do I hear you say one, two, three? Or I've understood you to be saying one, two, three. And then if you haven't understood them, 
If you understood them, they say, yes, absolutely. That's exactly what I meant. If you have not, they are going to re re they are going to repeat themselves or they are going to take a different angle to explain it. And that's beautiful because, because you are showing interest in, the, in, in what they've just said. And, 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 and we say it in Lhotla. When the person has just spoken and you are the next coming in, uh, in this case, you are not a chair, but you are the next coming in. It is, it is very respectful for you to paraphrase before you bring a new thing because you are saying that I'm not moving away from your topic without actually uh, harvesting what you've said. I, 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 you, 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 you edify, you affirm, then you bring your next topic. So you could paraphrase. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, so and so. I've understood to you to mean this. It's appreciated. And then you move on. It is so exactly that is important because uh, you want this to affirm them that uh, you have had them and they've made valuable input, but you are moving on to the next topic. And again, it's, listen, watch people hosting shows, especially on TV, uh, um, when they're really having their guests in mind and they don't want their guests to feel that they are just rushing them. They will paraphrase and then move on. And I'm doing that as well as we talk here because uh, you want to cover a ground, but you don't want to make people to feel that they are not making input, they're not making contribution. So paraphrasing and reflecting is one way of demonstrating that you are actively listening. And I think this, this the next one is uh, all what you have said, especially when we're talking about the downloading. They are saying that you must be patient. As a, as a listener. Because if you're not patient, you're going to rush, you're going to switch off, and you're going to ignore the message. And this is the biggest challenge of them all. And you can't be patient if you are not interested. And that brings us to the last point, which is we're holding judgment and avoid giving advice when you are not even asked for. Have you ever been in a situation where an interviewer or a, a, an anchor is starting to take the role of a guest? And instead of interviewing the guest, is starting to offer inputs on behalf of the guest. That, that is certainly a no-no because the listeners are going to question, why are you now bringing guests if you, could, if you feel you could have addressed the matter? Yourself, Andrew, and we experience that situation where the anchor and the guest exchange rules without them realizing it because they happen to be the subject matter expert of the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. Sam, I can't. Um... Well, I think that shows a certain level of comfort, right? You know, that they are able to even switch roles, you know, that the host has actually made the guest feel more comfortable and um, observing, of course, all the three listening models from the theory, you know, that then the guest is then able to just, you know, become the anchor, become the host, you know. I can't say I have personally experienced that. I've had situations where I've seen the hosts actually not just take charge, but um, they are able to continue the conversation, you know, with their guest. Like, for instance, Umam Lindiwe Sangweni, you know, whenever I attend the ProNet, you know, where she is interviewing you know, different people from different industries and different spaces. I I really admire how she's able to bring out, you know, the information from each individual and they are able to talk about their journey and also incorporate different learnings from each and every pronate session. You know, she does it so effortlessly and it's a and it's um face-to-face -face conversation. And every time there is a takeaway that she's always able to bring out of that person. And also the the empathy where 
you know, for instance, Utami Gati being published a book and she was so comfortable and, you know, extremely like she was able to talk about her entire journey, even even the downside, even, you know, the, the misfortune, misfortunes that she had experienced. And we were all able to empathize and become one with her. So I think I've been in a situation where I've seen hosts actually allowed their guests to be themselves and become so comfortable, um, you know, but I'm not sure to what extent, you know, I've seen a, um, a guest then become an anchor, you know, mm -hmm. but it's it's always been more of, hey, it's a, it's flowing, man. It's it's a conversation, the synergy, you know, and there's there's learnings, you know, that you actually get, and you also as the audience, you become one with the conversation. You're like, yeah, ne? you know, and yeah, so it's it's more of a of a synergy of not switching roles, but you're like, in fact, you're even asking who's who now, but you're not keeping tabs, mm -hmm. but you're enjoying the conversation more than anything. Yeah. Mm. And remember, uh, with our shows, if the guest is comfortable, this is what what then becomes nice if you can hold the space rather than becoming interview and have you we. That's what we we want. Uh, but it's not always the case that the guests will be comfortable. So you still then need to anchor the show. But indeed, I, I, I'm happy you are raising this. It's important when you when you realize that the guests are flowing, that you really now really lessen your intervention and allow the, the conversation to flow, but keep on pointing to the themes that you want to address without actually uh, uh, losing control of the show. Because the purpose of the anchor is to direct the show to where you want it to, to end. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, I don't know, I think the main that you were here and then you will hear Rabula as well. In the early 2020, 21, no, yeah, I think it was towards 2020. We had a show with Wanai Mohale, and we, they were, I think he, she was, he was being interviewed by Seha and the, our American friend. Bonang being Bonang, I think most of the times uh, he was directing the show. And 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 what was interesting with him, he he was intentionally doing so because he felt that they they were lacking, they were falling short. After the show, during the chit chat, he actually said so that that I I, I noticed that they they were running out of questions and I volunteered myself because I realized that you will still have some time. So you're not going to have guests like that all the time. But if you have such guests, you just then hold hold the space and and, 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 and direct them without actually intending to play your role even when your role is not wanted. I don't know who of you have ever experienced this case where this guest is so flowing that you feel like you don't have a role to play. And what do you do in that case? Sometimes it might help for you to verbalize it, but yo, I, I thought I was going to be the one that is taking you through these topics, but you seem to be so flowing. I hope my listeners are comfortable with me taking a break. Because if otherwise you will feel like a, you are not you are, you are, you, are, you don't know your job in that trap. Yes, <laughs> it happened when I was having the, the, the book review. Sylvia was flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia was flowing. That uh, I I I I took a back seat and allowed him to flow. You know, yeah, <laughs> it, she was very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good example. I remember. I remember that. Yeah, but, yes, but the, the flowing was also encouraged by the pointers that you were also putting on the table. 
because that okay. those I listened and I heard them and they triggered the flowing that actually came into being and I think that was good though. <laughs> no, I think I had a, a very good framework that I used uh, chapter by chapter and uh, it was very interesting when the, the guests were following and they were also uh, exhibiting uh, their expertise during the, the, the time they expressed themselves. It was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And you had a framework. Framework helps a lot. Uh, and that's something we must always keep in mind that as we are doing these follow-ups, it's a follow-up guided by that framework. What are you trying to achieve in actually uh, uh, doing what you do? But follow-up is a very one small bit of the entire whole thing of the show. As Divers always remind us that these all loose pieces, they are actually pieces of a bigger whole. It's not like we are saying you are just going to apply it single, singly, a single in a technique. It's a technique within many techniques that build a complete hosting of the show. So I hope we keep that as well, that integration is, uh, is important. Following up is just in the middle of the show, something is said and you feel strong that you need to follow up on. When you follow up, make sure that you're actually being fully present. They don't, they don't have to follow up all the time because sometimes the subject matter expert is so professional that they bring the point and they, they respond to your question and they, 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 they even wrap it up that there's no need for you to follow up. That, that is also a very, very important point. Don't follow up for the sake of following up because you're going to actually bore the listeners. Ines? So yeah, that's the point. So uh, I'm looking at time now. Let me quickly rush through the last three points, which are very important. The, the one is uh, being less judgment. Ways to be less judgment when listening include expressing empathy for the person or their situation, especially if you are going to be saying something that's a little bit more controversial. You may actually feel empathetic with them before you say it. Say, I hear what you're saying. I acknowledge your point of view. Uh, here is my take on it. So that is showing empathy. Then the next one is learning more about different people and cultures. I think uh, uh, sometimes certain cultures are sensitive to certain styles of talk. I don't think all cultures like it when you repeat what they have said. But I think uh, 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 it's important to know, you know, uh, 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 how people respond. To, to that, practicing acceptance of others. I mean, we have said it last time that you cannot be what you are not. Part of this train, the trainer is be aware of transformation processes that you need to engage in. The things that you have to unlearn and the things you have to learn so that when you are hosting the show, you don't try these things in the show. It, it, they must be your way of being. Hence, we're doing meditation, mindfulness, and all those type of things and affirmations and gratitude. You, you can't do them because it's a call for you to do those just because you're holding show. If by way of being, you are not able to do those things, you're going to fall short. And then the last one is recognizing when you may need to, when you may judge the other person and stop those thoughts. So recognize when you have been judgmental and stop those thoughts. Uh, in the process, or even apologize in the in 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 the middle of the show. Then the next one is ways to improve your active listening. Again, we've touched on this by by way of repetition. Encourage your curiosity. Be curious and interested. Sometimes we we are not curious about what other people have to share with us. And especially if it's not your way of being, you get bored very easily and you get disinterested. So learn to be curious because you don't know what you are going to get from the next statement that is going to be said or what, what, what you are going to be getting when you are doing that follow-up. Find topic that interests you both. I mean, this is now at the stage of uh, 
putting together the show or deciding on the topic. It must be the topic that you are interested in and the topic that is going to be interesting your guests. And that's why in the in the 2020 uh, most of you were specializing in topics. Divesh was focusing on management and leadership. Uh, Tendani was focusing on arts and culture. I remember uh, 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 Rabula, you were also touching on on strategy together with uh, management and strategy together with uh, Ramabaka. And uh, Mbosenze and Patrick, they were doing sports. So, so, so it's always sometimes important to deal with topics that you know you will be passionate uh, about. And that makes it very easy for you to, to be interested in listening to hear other people's perspective. But they say that it's important that uh, you practice your active listening skill. And this is what we said at the beginning. For me, it's, uh, it's one area that uh, I've had to learn and I'm still learning. It's, 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 it's an art, it's a skill that we must learn because when we have become good listeners, we become very good in responding and in engaging in meaningful conversations. Let, let's, let's recognize our gaps. Let's measure where we are in terms of listening. It's not just, it's not just saying I'm going to listen. It's, uh, it's really experiencing the power of being a good listener and, and really reflect and, and appreciate the transformation that you experience when you apply it. And then, of course, understand when it's time for you to exit the conversation. So there's time when you realize that this conversation is not going anywhere or this particular topic is not really meaningful and then you move. Or you might even want to ask for a break and then reposition the show. Yeah, I think those are the pointers. We will expand on this tomorrow at the, at the radio show, but... Uh, I think at this point, we have exhausted this topic. Uh, I don't know whether there is any particular point around the art of following up that you feel we need to address. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what this module is all about. This unit is all about. To follow up is really the uh, final product of having been good listener. So if you can comment and then check out as well what you take away from this conversation, and then we will bring the conversation to end. Uh, for me, uh, Prasem, the the topic to get today took, took me down memory lane in my practice as a social worker. Because uh, it embraces the, the seven principles of social work that include acceptance, individualization, communication, determination, confidentiality, non judgmental attitude, as well as control of emotional involvement. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these principles are, uh, are informed. Yeah, we, we missed you there, but we got your you got your, we got your point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter's taking me down memory lane. Thanks. Just me there. It was just seven principles of social work: acceptance, individualization, communication, determination. Confidentiality, non-judgmental attitude, as well as emotional involvement. All of them are engulfed by the art of good listening. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much, Dadra Mutla, for educating us uh, around the seven principles of social work. I'm so happy to hear that uh, those principles are actually the principles we are using in our other professions, like coaching and mentoring. Wow, beautiful. So you have got it then that there are Buddha. You might as well embark on coaching on coaching profession. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad we took you down the memory lane. I've I I I I I'm gonna come back to you on those 
seven principles, but we've captured them on the recording. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sam. Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sam. I think for me, I don't know what I had imagined about how the train, the trainer session was going to unfold, but it was not like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am like, every time I join this session, I'm always in awe because there's so much that I'm learning and I'm unlearning, you know, about yeah. myself as an individual you know, and also my perception of what I thought being an anchor is, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. even like, guys, if I had my way, I would delete all those conversations on my Instagram page, <laughs> you know, that I had. Um, but more than anything for me, thank you, Mr. Sam. I'm seeing a lot. I'm learning a lot, you know, about just having a conversation, you know, and the importance of listening you know, and being present. And I think for me, more than anything is the part where you spoke about, you don't just follow up if you're not going to be present, you know. If you're just following up, you're going to bore the listener because at times we do things in a mundane manner and we think that people don't see it and they don't feel it, but they do, you know. So thank you so much for this. Every single session that I've been attending has just been a very big lesson for me. So thank you for that. I'm glad, I'm glad, and I'm sure, I'm sure one day we'll have you sitting on the other side anchoring the conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm patient to wait for that day. <laughs> I thought I was ready, but I I, I am going to wait. <laughs> You'll get the, the 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 best approach is just to to host. You 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 have to start somewhere, and we know you will be ready. But you have the whole year to cover all these units. I'm sure you'll be overflowing with uh, concepts and principles and ideas and techniques. Thank you for checking out. Yeah, I think for me, um, thanks, thanks again, um, and Tatisima, and for this very informative session. Um, you know what one takes home from from my side is uh, maybe um almost to what Andrew is saying that um sometimes we do things unconsciously um just because you are in the comfort zone you know you might be thinking I've anchored before I'm going to listen to this and then this is how I'm just going to run it but to me the take home is more in terms of um um, um, listening without uh, judgment, being judgmental, <laughs> because um, I think one one would easily um, uh, want to kind of understand if what is being said really um, it's coming out quite clearly, and if it doesn't, you kind of think that um, the 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 expect um, that you are you are entering or hosting um, is failing to say that and you you get very tempted to want to assist them not not yeah. maliciously but want to assist because you are worried about um the listeners that they are going to miss something that is very critical which which they expect is not saying and you want to then say it. and i think as i said earlier on that um it 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 draws between the line of um um you being judgmental to how you are already uh, listening to what the 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 whole the 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 expect is saying 
And um, that the fact of not being judgmental, withholding your judgmental is a very big thing to me now that I'm taking home. Honestly, I think the one thing that I could actually say that um, one could have been dipping deeper into it is, which comes a bit naturally, it's more being empathetic, you know, the empathetic mode, as has been said. I think that's the area that um, I would actually, as I try to put myself again on evaluating myself, is it's an area that I think one would have been doing much more, you know, in terms of um, trying to feel um, the other person, you know, and and as uh, Divesh had said earlier on that, you know, the tone in the voice would actually just tell you in terms of um, how you are being empathetic to what the person is saying. And um, yeah, that's to me, it's a, it's a, it's a good um, um, take home as well. Um, and yeah, maybe lastly, <laughs> I just want to thank Tata Ramutla as well. You know, um, I would, I would really love to, to know to those seven points of social work, they, they sound quite, quite very um, um, important and a very good learning lesson as well. But thank you. Yeah. Yes, and that that I'm like, if you can just drop the those seven principles in the WhatsApp group, or that of a resident uh, uh, Ankas, that would be great. Or if you send them to me, I will just share them with the group on the WhatsApp. Thank, thanks, thanks, uh, Julia. Tendani has left. She, she dropped an, a, a message in the chat that she needs to attend to the middle one. Yeah. So thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, Sylvia, uh, who's next? Um, I'll just be brief in that this end. Uh, also, I thank you for like the, the content and the contribution that has been made for me. I, I, I really enjoyed like a uh, session more on, uh, you know, being empathetic and trying to mess yourself in your audience or in your, uh, when you're having a conversation to try and, you know, understand, put yourself in a position of, of, of the community, the person you're communicating with, it, uh, it came more as like, it, it opened up like a different view from my side and also trying to increase curiosity in order to be able to be more attentive to what is being said was something that also I like. And also I, I would say talking on uh, empathetic, uh, I also liked uh, what that the Ramutla said about, you know, how he practice uh, in empathy uh, in social work discipline. It was, it was very, like, for me, it was more interesting. And uh, also when uh, the conversation was happening, I was also thinking about, actually, this goes, it, it's a two-way stream. Uh, when, you, when you learn how to listen, you also learn how to communicate. So that, for me, was something as, uh, like, there were some uh, topics about, you know, your the tone of your voice, the your gestures, nonverbal uh, communication. So it kind of uh, balanced both in terms of when you listen and also when you speak, what uh, people are listening to. So that was something that I, I actually took. And thank you that they said for me that that was very interesting. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Om Chile. Yeah, uh, we, 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 we hope you also one day you will be like Andrew. You will be on the other side <laughs> and uh, uh, anchoring shows. Uh, you participated in the book review as well, and uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you continue. So we we have a, we still have more time to to get you ready. Yes, yes, I'm preparing now. I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Divesh? Thank you, Brasem, for the conversation today, as well as the colleagues for sharing their insights. I mean, we're never too old and we're never too wise to learn 
And uh, we must never shy away from being open-minded enough that whatever we share, uh, somebody else can actually learn from it. Doesn't matter how expert, what expertise the other person may have, we still have a contribution to make uh, in the conversations that we have. From the 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 conversation we we were focusing in on tonight, um, the different modes of listening is all important. They do have some value to add in the delivery of the conversation that you're having with your guest for the benefit of your audience, especially since the medium uh, we're focusing in on is that of uh, online broadcasting. And of course, some of those skills, uh, even though it can be applied to a visual platform, if you're doing uh, video broadcasting, for example, but the skill is more uh, necessary to be fine-tuned for purposes of on online broadcasting, uh, radio format, where we can't actually see the audience and we can't actually see the guests themselves as well. Thank you, Sam. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Divesh. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, the, the moment one thinks that he has learned enough, that's the beginning of downward trend in one's personal and professional development. And I, and I think that point, Divesh, it really needs to be driven home to so many of us because the, the world we live in is changing so fast that you can never ever be satisfied with what you know. And learning is not only informal things, but exactly what we are doing now. Uh, even myself, the, the the research I have always to do to augment the what we already know from 2020 is is amazing. How many new things I'm finding and I'm establishing, and so much so that I've had to join so many groups and forums uh, locally and globally on the space that we are in. And as a coach, you know, uh, we are expected to demonstrate every year to our coaching federations uh, of the new knowledge that we have acquired because they are aware of the fact that we are we are assisting so many people with their personal and professional challenges in life. And if we don't learn on an ongoing basis, we can cause so much damage. Thanks for bringing that. And I think uh, that's exactly why we do what we do because we host shows every week. And if we think we are the best and we don't learn, we could cause so much damage, even to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. And again, and diverse by the end of December, I will cover 40 units. I don't know how much you and I and the colleagues will have learned. <laughs> Great. Let's to check out. Thanks, Divesh. I think we left with Ompile and, and Rapula. If you, you don't have any need to check out, may I close because it's already past nine. Uh, I, I thought Maynard would close down so that, uh, you, know, you know, in Kota, the chief yes. is allowed to speak, so it looks like Maynard is fast asleep. But now, my take up on this session uh, is just a reminder of uh, um, active listening uh, in, a, in an environment or in a conversation as such. And second to that is um, make sure that you manage and control uh, the discussion to be in line with what the topic says at the time of the day. That's those are two things I'm taking you know, around that. I I I think um, I'm conversant with the topic yet. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, uh, and that Rapula. May not the last one. 
I did uh, um, uh yes today I was actually uh, preoccupied a lot but uh, nevertheless um the topic says has been very great and uh, the issue of empathy and uh, listening uh, listening is definitely a skill for you to make a follow ups you definitely need to listen properly and attentively so that you will be able to put yourself into a guest's shoes and so that you can be able to act direct the show. Uh, more more and over, colleagues, uh, thanks so much for the great show from my side. I thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thanks, Maynard. Uh, yeah, so I got an apology from, uh, from Emmanuel. He was driving from somewhere and hoping he will arrive in time. But uh, I'm sure th th this this topic has been quite very interesting. I think I will try to push the podcast, or its podcast, to come out immediately, so that we can reflect on it because it's a it's a it's a precursor to unit number fourteen, conduct nine, challenging with dignity. As you notice, uh, we we are really taking the the whole hosting and eating it one bit at a time. Uh, Divesh said it very well. So we are going to look at, this was a follow-up, just a follow-up, but now the next Conduct 9 is about challenging with dignity. And that is to say that uh, not everything that the, the guests say is always, is, you are always in agreement with it. And as an anchor, you must be able to to, to bring that to the attention of the guests and the listeners, if you hold a different view. But you have to do that with dignity because our shows are not, uh, are not like a contestation of ideas, but enriching of ideas because it comes from the, the space of coaching. And in a, in a coaching, we, we edify when we challenge, we affirm before we challenge. Mm -hmm.